Good afternoon. How oh, nice to see you. My name is Christopher Schalkvist and I am an information security specialist with Svensk Kraftnet, Swedish National Grid. The latest year, Sweden has been working hard on the legislation regarding critical infrastructure. We've uh, looked at the proposals and we've uh, been changing the, the words from the security of the nation to the security of Sweden. Uh, what we're aiming for is the protection of Sweden's independence, in meaning independence, sovereignty, and prosperity. This presentation is about this, as well as the current threat landscape. Looking at the areas necessary for keeping up the Swedish security, we have national defense. We're talking regular armed forces, making sure the, that we don't get a sovereignty uh, on the other way. We're talking about the democracy and legal system, making sure that we are still a demo uh, the democratic country where those values are protected and that the legal system works as intended. We're talking about life and health, making sure food stuff and drinking water supply is readily available, as well as uh, making sure that uh, emergency facilities, hospitals are working. Economy, making sure that we can trade, we can move money uh, and pay. The so societal functionality, this is my sector. In this sector we have the transportation, rails, roads, etc. Moving, moving goods. Telecommunication, necessary for us to keep the internet working as well as phoning to our relatives and uh, watching TV. The energy sector, which I'm quite fond of since I'm working with the Swedish National Grid, is a necessity for the other societal functionality. In Sweden we are talking about level of consequence. If one of those functions in society would be harmed in that way. Can anyone guess where we put the energy sector in Sweden? Yes, definitely five. Extremely serious impact. Traditionally, when we're talking about threat, threat risk, and vulnerability analysis, uh, we have a method of establishing the current situation regarding threats. Uh, applicable antagonistic threats with the intent of ability to act against resources that needs protection in regards to energy supply. Security analysis is a part of this new legislation, as well as the old legislation, but now in new legislation we're going to talk about security protection analysis. It's legally required. Uh, to maintain one, uh, this kind of analysis for uh, our governmental sectors. The big thing to remember when we talk about the difference between threat, risk, and vulnerability analysis and security analysis is we need to remember 
that you have an actor with an ability and motivation to do some harm to what we are trying to protect. This information is based on open sources and is what we at Switch Power Grid use to define how we are going to work with the protection of electricity, the, the electrical sector in Sweden. An armed attack against Sweden. This is still today very unlikely, even though we are keeping an eye on the, the, the activities around the Baltic Sea. We have seen a dominance change around the political area there. Um, what our, our goal is to make sure that the civil defense can initially perform five to ten days in a war or war-like situation to make sure that the rest of the total defense of society works. We should also plan for other tasks uh, to maintain our regular operation for a significantly longer period of time. Still, this is not something that we are very scared of at the moment. We think that the probability is low, but we are, we are kept keeping on island. Increased threats from Islamist motivated terrorist extremists. There has been reporting in the newspapers. This is limited all information, but we have seen confirmed travelers going to certain areas of the world and getting trained to do terrorist actions. The targets, though, for Sweden is mainly the police, military, and so it's a threat for the, for the democracy, for the legal system. Uh, for the electricity sector, no motivation, as we can see at the moment. Lone wolf terrorists. We've seen acts of lone wolf terrorists in Norway a few years ago. These are extremely difficult to monitor and can be a threat for the infrastructure, but are unlikely to be motivated to go after the electricity sector. But they are still on the map. Sabotage. We see a lot of sabotage by pet criminals. We are talking about stealing copper, uh, copper from, uh, from our uh, substations uh, for selling, on monetary gain uh, in short, which can be a, a problem for our infrastructure, but it's not done systematically. It's not the motivation to harm Sweden uh, or Sweden's <coughs> infrastructure isn't there. Organized crime. Um, we're talking about motorcycle gangs, but as well as uh, uh, Aryan movements and uh, those kind of good guys. Um, we don't see a big, big motivation there to go after the electricity sector. Uh, in smaller cases, we can see uh, the threats against um, local companies, uh, but not for the for the sector in in the greater sense. Intelligence activity, however, one of the big topics re recurring here at four six events. 
information gathering, espionage, advanced persistent threats. This is something we monitor very closely. We are doing lots of projects at Sanskrit towards the sector to raise the awareness. We are supporting, educating. Um, much of the information um, an attacker views is from open sources. We, Sweden is a very open country. We like to share information on how we do stuff. It's to have the transparency of the government. That tradition is usually share, uh, usually you, you can see it in the, in the private organizations as well. We put our names out on the web. We put, uh, put lots of uh, information on Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. This is open sources that an attack can use against us. What I'm saying does not stop that. I'm saying be aware of what information you share and how that can be used against you. Insider and classic infiltration is of course something you want to, something that is ever persistent, something you have to be aware of. For that, the security protection legislation helps us. We're going to go work again. Since 2011, we've intensified the work on security issues uh, towards the sector. This manifests, as I've said, in projects uh, towards guidance and indications. If you visit the Geek Lounge, we have a, dem uh, a demonstration, the demonstrator, where we show a simple SCADA attack through a uh, spear phishing attack. It's something that is just getting started. This is the 0.8 version. Um, please come down, have a look at it, and uh, give us an input what you think would be a good next step in the demonstration. Do you have any questions? Yes. Yeah, how many works in uh, cybersecurity uh, as before? Depending on. <laughs> uh, at, in the IT department, we have, it's more of a virtual organization there. Uh, so I would say five, uh, five quarter, uh, quarter uh, time to employ. For the whole organization, we are two working with super uh, information, information security specific uh, tasks. But for uh, supporting the projects as well, we have uh, three full time employees. So, two handfuls, less than a dozen. Yes. How I mean, how do you measure? Uh, I guess like what you thought was most uh, at the highest risk now was espionage. And how 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 likely is it that uh, you have uh, an entity trying to get a hold of information from something like that today? Very likely, uh, but I'm asking for the. The whole sector. Of course, we're the big dog. We we maintain the, uh, the, the tra big transmission lines. So you go after us, you get a good cascading effect. But we're the authority in Sweden that are tasked with maintaining the whole uh, the whole uh, electricity sector. So. We, we know of attacks that has happened. 
uh, you know, uh, you know, several uh, actors tried to to do attacks, more or less refined, of course. Uh, so, yes. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Is the anti uh, security organization such that it will cover the areas close to the physical uh, unit substations and uh, other, like the test equipment we were hearing recently? I mean, how, what is the division of responsibility? Is it throughout the organization or is it sort of a layer? Good question. Um, we have central functions for all types of security, physical security, logical security, of course. Um, for the specific projects, for the, the building of a new substation or a new uh, interconnection, that is, uh, for, for those purposes, we have specific project um, project uh, personnel that has the projects. But it is all, of course, uh, audited by the central functions. Any more questions? That is tasked with the the IT department. Those guys, at some point, have to be divided into uh, computer uh, computer communication and telecommunication. Telecommunication being fiber for further distances. Uh, but those engineers current, uh, working with those tasks from a daily basis are the ones uh, monitoring. Uh, monitoring their work, we have central functions in the IT department and uh, monitoring the processes, the uh, actual uh, organization uh, is not central. Thank you very much for coming today and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. <laughs>